you could walk on by and not even notice. But this is the birthplace of California's oil industry. This definitely feels haunted. The ghosts of oil men of the past haunt this canyon. <laughs> Welcome to the something or other tour. We're at the historic ghost town of Mentryville. And look who's back. Cole's back. What's up guys? Quick question for you though. Uh -huh. Who's this guy? What do you mean? I'm your brother. That's the clone. You're the clone. All right, just huh. don't worry about it. A lot's, lot's transpired huh. since you've been away. Welcome to the Something or Other Tour. This is the historic ghost town of Mentryville, California. Mentryville was an oil boom town back in the 1880s. It literally helped build California and the nation with the oil that was produced here. And uh, Cole's back in the sewed. Been a little while. <laughs> it's named Mentryville after the head of this whole operation, Charles Mentry. He was a French immigrant that had a knack for finding the black gold. Mentryville is tucked in what is called Pico Canyon, just north of Los Angeles. Mentryville today is part of a conservancy area. There's trailheads, a lot of people come ride bikes hike, there's some picnic tables, cool park. While Northern California was experiencing the gold rush, in Southern California there was a bit of an oil rush. There were some wells being drilled all over Southern California, including in this canyon. The wells weren't super successful at first, but the company knew of this guy, Charles Mentry, who seemed to have a knack for it. And he was based in Pennsylvania, although he was originally a French immigrant. So they brought him out here, made him the superintendent of the entire operation. And in 1876, he sunk a well that became the first successful commercial oil well in California. And the oil came shooting out. The company, California Star Oil, went on to become Chevron. And it all started here, right in this canyon. I drink your milkshake. Mentryville was a working oil site until the 1990s. It was actually the longest continually running oil well in the world when it shut down. We got lights and shelves and a stairway. I've seen a lot of chicken coops in my life, but uh, this one holds up. Serious coopage going on. Cool, cool. Oh, this is straight up Red Dead stuff here. Oh yeah, we're living it. Red Dead Redemption 2 was set in 1899, about the time all this was built. At its height, Mentryville had so many people that they had to build a barn and stables and a chicken coop for all the livestock and cattle that they had. At its height, there was over a hundred families living in this canyon. The leather designs in the saddle are still here, like pretty clear still. That's crazy. You still see them really well. That thing is older than heck. What'd you find? <laughs> you know, we always got to show the commodes for you. you yeah. Full-blown so, commodes. Be right back. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Now we'll tip it over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slippery dirt, dude. My God. I think the power's out. Although it looks original, this house was actually built for a Green Acres TV movie. I love the original show. I've never seen the TV movie though. So it was made to look original, so it looks a lot like the houses that were here in this canyon. But it's not. It's not actually original. It's still super cool. Oh, I like the wallpaper. Really cool wallpaper, I like it. <laughs> really feng shui. <laughs> We're actually on a movie set in a real ghost town. Let's go ahead and pop that sucker open. So a raccoon jumps in my face. Treasure. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and hop in there? <laughs> Just kidding. Ooh, oil. <laughs> Find out. It appears to be a hole of some sort. <laughs> There's a trail.
trail through the canyon, which used to be dotted with all these wells, you can still see a bunch of remnants, old pieces of equipment, and it's just a beautiful hike and the right time of year. If you hike up the long winding trail, you eventually get to the main attraction. Well, this is it kids, Pico Canyon's oil well number four, California's first commercially successful oil well. And when they finally capped it in 1990, it was the world's longest continually running oil well. This little spot right here, this little hole in the ground, changed the world as we know it. When Charles Mentry drilled into this in 1876, it built a thriving industry that turned into today's Chevron. This bit of history is probably longly forgotten by most folks, but they have plaques out here. Most of the oil industry that was back east, primarily Pennsylvania, there was fears that they would actually tap out, that they would run out of oil. So they started looking west and Charles Mentry drilled right here and proved that there was oil here and there was enough to sustain a whole industry. One real cool thing about Charles Mentry, when we're talking about the late 19th century out west, there wasn't a whole lot of resources. They had to come all the way from the east coast by train. But this operation was booming. Charles Mentry was a brilliant guy. So sometimes when he didn't have the equipment or resources that he needed, he ended up purchasing a bunch of old pieces and scraps from the Southern Pacific Railroad Company and built what he needed himself. There's these pumps out here, looks like, just left to rot. Wish I knew what any of this stuff did. Oil wells began booming all over California, many of which are still around to this day. There's still oil fields in the middle of Los Angeles. Oil there, oh my God, a snake. Man, that snake slithered super fast right across the dirt. I don't think it was anything dangerous. <laughs> Anyways, there's still oil derricks still hidden inside buildings in the middle of LA. And there's some oil fields that you can see, you can drive right by. Does it trip anyone else out that some guy from France came to New York City that made a name for himself in Pennsylvania, somehow found himself in this little canyon at this spot, knew to dig right here and found success? Kind of weird, right? This was far enough back where there wasn't as many uses for oil as there is today. You know, there's a whole refining process to get it to do what you want, whether it's kerosene or gasoline, motor oil, in the late 1800s is when they started discovering more and more uses for oil. And then because of oil wells like this, the United States was able to form itself into a superpower through both world wars. You know who needs oil? Robots. There you go, kids, there's your robot. If there weren't plaques right here, you could walk right past this thing and have no idea of the significance. It's just a hole in the ground with a pipe coming out of it, you know? But it changed the course of the United States changed the course of the world, really. I mean, are we docking black gold? This is in the Santa Susana mountain range. We all know the destruction that drilling for oil and natural resources can do to the environment. And now, what, almost 150 years later? And as beautiful as this hike is, it's still littered with remnants of that past. There was a story that when some folks came to Mentryville on horseback, they said that the horses would not drink the water. That water is definitely dirty and ugly. It looks like some sort of runoff. I don't know if it's oil particularly, but it kind of looks like it. You can see the old pipelines. It doesn't seem like it would be an oil pipeline but maybe brought water into the camp. It says Chevron on it, so like I had mentioned, the company that was built in this canyon later became Chevron. What is this? I wonder if it was a former Derek. Strange that right up the trail there's this park, the Johnson Park. I don't know which Johnson it's named after. Perhaps Dwayne the Rock. <laughs> don't have service in the canyon so I'm gonna go research this and if I find anything I will do voiceover to explain it now Johnson Park was the name given to the picnic area used by the workers for company parties and recreation there were a few different Johnson's throughout the history of the company that it could have been named after and nobody knows exactly which one this trail was dotted with oil wells. So not only do we have Pico number four, the first big successful one, but we got the ruins of a whole nother oil derrick here. I believe it's the last one left in this canyon. How cool is that? Although this oil derrick found in Johnson Park is a replica built in the early 1960s out of genuine equipment and parts from scrapped derricks. 
in honor of a retiring oil worker named Bill Cochins. This particular oil derrick was the thing I was most excited to see here. I don't know if I've ever seen an old wooden oil derrick in person before. So cool. I have heavy, heavy criticisms of the oil industry, but you know me, I just appreciate history, good and bad. So this is still exciting for me. And I gotta say, I think it's days are numbered. There's a lot of damage to this thing, so if they don't come out here and put up some supports or something, this thing's gonna fall. Literally, the wheel is holding a whole bunch of it up. It's missing part of the structure. Part of the pump mechanism is falling over. This thing's in rough shape. I'm glad I made it out here to see it before it falls. Chain looks like a giant bike chain. Bicycle for a giant. Looks like this was made by Ames Ironworks in Oswego, New York. I don't know if I've ever seen a wheel built like this. Does this have a name? Does anyone know? It's almost like a spiral design. In just a few short years, California went from no barrels produced to millions upon millions each year. I keep wondering how many of these pieces are from Southern Pacific Railroad. You know, these old pieces of locomotives repurposed to facilitate the oil industry. I don't know. Cool, huh? Yep. I love an old schoolhouse. There was a guy named Charles N. Felton. He's the president of Pacific Coast Oil, and they named this schoolhouse after him. So this is the Felton Schoolhouse. He later became a U.S. Senator. All the school kids are just walking up to get their lessons. All the school kids walk into class with their Jan sports on and Nike shoes. <laughs> They're Ninja Turtles and lunch pails. <laughs> They're light up Ninja Turtle sketchers. <laughs> Getting their lessons on their iPads. <laughs> Goes to show how big of an operation it was when they needed their own schoolhouse in this canyon. It catered to children all the way up to eighth grade. And this school operated until 1932. A bunch of families settled here, made life here for decades. There's a lot of people here pumping that oil. <laughs> There's still some of the old oil equipment littering the hillsides. Look, this has duplex piston pump. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Dude, standing right here, you can actually smell oil. It smells like an old like mechanic shop or auto shop in high school, you know? Yeah, these hills are kind of beautiful, but also a little dirty. The environmental destruction that happened here. <laughs> hey, is that another commode back there? I think so double commode community crapper here <laughs> i love a commode love a commode so they did have a school a bunch of housing but it was mostly an oil camp sort of like a mining camp just workers living there there wasn't a whole lot of industry besides the oil stuff so you may be wondering what about services and resources and commerce well most of the money from here went to nearby newhall which is about seven miles eastward that was more of a full town than just an oil camp. New Hall lasted until about 1987 when it consolidated with a few other neighboring little towns to become the bigger city of Santa Clarita, California. Do we have another commode? Some commodes up the wazoo here. No shortage. Definitely wish more of the original buildings would have survived, but the schoolhouse is pretty cool. This is the big house. This is the house that Charles Mentry built for him and his family. It was completed in the 1880s. And throughout the years, a bunch of different superintendents and foremans lived here with their families as well. Pretty girthy sucker. And it's for sure haunted. <laughs> Charles Mentry was sort of a guru for finding the black gold. By all accounts, he was well-liked. He treated his workers with respect and dignity. So he was good at what he did and he treated people well for the most part. Serious stuff on our hands, dude. Take a walk with me. Okay. Are you kidding? Uh-oh. Are you kidding? Huh? You joking? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Foiled again. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to go down there, though. 
I keep hearing that people are trying to put some money into this place to renovate it. It'd be cool if they eventually did tours of the big house here. My dead eye ready. <laughs> That's so creepy. It's a wooden door. It's crazy, dude. Well, of course, stuff like this makes me think of Daniel Plainview from There Will Be Blood. Fantastic movie. But by all accounts, Charles Mentry was not the cutthroat, bloodthirsty character that Daniel Plainview was. Because this wasn't a proper full town, it was just a camp, there was no cemetery. Although there's lots of rumors, someone just misspoke in an interview decades ago, claiming that somewhere hidden amongst the weeds here was a cemetery. It's possible, maybe there's some folks buried, but there was never an official cemetery in Mentryville. Although back here, looks like it could be a cemetery. Oh man, look at that. There used to be a ladder up to the roof. Aha. Uh -huh. I would have loved to go up there. Underground basement. <laughs> Whoa, those were no joke. You could almost picture Daniel Plainview staring out those windows overseeing the oil fields. So of course we have the big house, we have the schoolhouse, we have the old barn that's original. All the other houses that were here were pretty much disassembled by the owners when they left and moved away. So they could use the materials wherever they ended up. Even though it's not original, the Green Acres TV movie house is awesome. It's just wild to think the operation here became Chevron. The oil industry needed to move west and it started looking elsewhere all around the world. And because of what was found here, it helped grow the United States into a superpower, helped win the world wars. That's just crazy, man. All that said, I do hope the oil industry, as we know it, suffers a very abrupt and final death. Looks like a little snack shack. <laughs> I don't know what this is, anyone know? It's on the side of the creek here, across from the big house. Remember, we have a Patreon, bunch of cool behind the scenes bonus episodes and stuff. So if you'd like to support us, check out the link below. Thank you to those that already support us. Yeah, man, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff, pretty cool history hidden in this canyon here. And that's it with the ghost town of Metroville. Hope you guys enjoyed, amazing history. Like, subscribe, share, do all the cool things the cool kids do, something or other tour, vert, like, what is this? Howdy. Dude, are you? Oh no. Oh no. Bigfoot? Let's track it. I learned how to do it in Red Dead. I'm good. Yeah, maybe it's supper time. Maybe we should get out of here. <laughs> Pico Canyon. <laughs> Whole bunch of bricks in there. Build us a house. Pollution that's probably in this canyon. There's probably not a whole lot of animal life, but the bugs sure thrive. <laughs> Pumping that <out. laughs>